Hi there, this is Kristen Cooper, your certified mortgage planning specialist. Just wanted to jump on here and talk about different options in a negotiation market for writing your contract. And we want to make sure that we're looking at all options so that you're writing it, not just for short-term goals, but also for long-term, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Knowing all your options and the impact of that is super important. So working with a mortgage advisor to go over all those options is really important. If you have specific questions, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to go over those options with you. So what we're looking at here is just a standard purchase. Let's just say it's a $550,000 purchase on a property. So let's say home's listed for the 500,000, you put in the offer of 500,000, it's accepted. Let's assume you're putting 20% down. So your loan amount would be 440 on a 30 year mortgage. We're just gonna use a 6.99 rate. Of course, rates are up and down all the time. This is just for an example. And we need to see what you qualify for specifically. So reach out, I'm happy to go over that information with you. But let's just assume that's where rates are. Then you would be, you know, that would be your standard, um, contract. You put in the offer, they accept it. Great. But let's say that we're in a negotiations market, which means that the buyer has some room to negotiate on a property. Now you'll want to work with the real estate agent and find out if that's an option on the properties that you're looking at. Cause there's a lot that goes into what type of market it is and how a property is priced to see if it's an option for you to be able to negotiate the terms of the contract. But let's say that you are. So let's say that you found a home. The agent says, yeah, I think that we can you know, get the seller to negotiate um, and come up with uh, better terms than maybe what the home is listed for. So you want to say, you want to look and say, okay, what's going to be the best for us? So what we're looking at here is really three options that you have. The first option is what we call as a permanent buy down. So if we're in a market where the interest rates are higher or elevated, or you need to qualify for a higher price point, these are the strategies that we would look at. So if you do what's called a permanent buy down, what that means is that you get the seller to give you a credit and that credit is used towards buying down your interest rate. So they're going to give you, in this scenario, we're going to ask for a $10,000 credit and they're going to give you $10,000 to use towards getting a lower rate. So you can see how now we got the interest rate down. If this is where it is, of course, it changes all the time. But let's just assume now we get the rate down to 6.25. Well, what's great about that is now your payment goes from you know 2924 principal and interest to 2709. So now you can afford either a higher price point or the payment's more affordable for you if we go with that option. Another consideration uh, in a higher interest rate market is what's called a temporary rate buy down. So what a temporary rate buy down does, and it depends on if you're in what's called a two one or a three two one buy down, but let's just assume a two one buy down. What that means is that if you, the standard rate is 6.99, that's your actual interest rate. So that will be your interest rate. However, the seller is going to pay a fee, which is called the buy down. So in this specific scenario, it would be 11,351. Then the seller would pay that fee and you would get a lower interest rate for two years. So what that would look like is year one, you would get 2% lower. So you would get a 4.99% interest rate for the first year, which is gonna lower your payment. And then the second year, it would go from 4.99 to 5.99. And then the third year, it goes to 6.99 and it will continue that as long as you have the loan through the remainder of the term. So this is a good strategy that's being used to help people be able to afford a mortgage. Maybe you have another property that you're gonna be selling or maybe you have a pay increase coming and you need short relief for a couple of years, this is gonna get you the lowest payment option for the first two years versus a permanent buy down because the permanent buy down is gonna get you to a lower rate, but it's over the term of the loan, not just for a couple of years. So it's gonna be a little bit higher payment than the first two years would be on the temporary buy down. The last option is a price break, meaning that we're gonna to have to ask the seller to bring down the price in the negotiations versus you going with a lower interest rate option. So let's say that you're completely fine with the payment of whatever it is on the property and you would rather just have a reduction in the price because you're comfortable with the terms of the financing and the payment, then you can ask for a, a price break, meaning you can ask for a reduction in price in order for um, in order for you to get that break from the negotiation. So let's say that you got a $10,000 price break. So now your $10,000 brings that price down to 540,000, which brings your loan down, same interest rate of the 6.99, but now your payment's only 2871. 
So the savings of that $10,000 by reduction in price, your payment went from $29.24 to $28.71. Now, if you are looking for affordability, then you would want to look at a permanent rate buy down or a temporary buy down, because as you can see, it's going to be the lower payment option. But what do we know? How do we know which one's going to be the best option for you? Well, that's why you're looking at this here. And this shows you a graph. And I am happy to go over all this information with you if you have specific questions on a property or want to look at numbers for you. But I'm always looking at the financial aspect of so based on your goals, what the market is, what's going to be the best option for you. So if we look at these graphs, you can see here the 30 year normal standard purchase is in purple. The permanent buy down is the red. The temporary buy down is this teal color. And then if you just ask for a price break is the green. So what makes the most sense? Well, if we look at the graph here, you can see the cost for each option and you can see how that affects over time. So you can see, I mean, they're all pretty close, you know, year one, year two, a little bit of separation. You can really start seeing the separation obviously here at year three. And it mainly has to do with temporary buy downs only for, you know, the first two years. And then it starts to uh, go back up to the, the normal rate on year three, which takes into the cost factor. So you could see if you're looking at your, you know, your three, you would be looking at the lower cost options being the permanent and the temporary buy down. You can see them here. Both of those are kind of here and they stay this way until you get to, you know, your four and a half, five, it starts to separate. So if you think that you're going to keep this mortgage for more than three years, that's where you're going to see the separation of a temporary buy down versus a permanent buy down and where you may want to consider the permanent buy down versus the temporary buy down, which, you know, also take into account with the temporary buy down year three, your payment goes up to the full interest rate amount. You only have the relief for the first couple of years on that buy down strategy. So hopefully that makes more sense. I always want you to see what your options are using, you know, a negotiations. All of these were in line pretty much with what the seller would be giving, whether they give a $10,000 price break, $10,000 credit for a permanent buy down, or slightly more in order to do a temporary buy down option here. A temporary buy down option is just simply going to be whatever the savings is that you have, the seller has to pay up front. Meaning that if you're one, your interest rate is 4.99, your payment for the lower payment that first year versus the full payment, the seller is paying up front essentially in a subsidy. They're paying that up front so that you can have a lower payment for the two years. So we can calculate how much is needed by how much you're saving over the two years, and that's what would be needed. So the savings that you would have in your payment over two years is 11351, which is what the seller will be paying up front in the temporary buy down. So if you have any specific questions, please reach out to me. I'd love to be your resource and go over all the different strategies for you to make sure that you're getting the best options for you moving forward in any market that you're looking at and happy to go over the market conditions, strategies, and contracts uh, that are going to be the best for you moving forward.